the RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Of course. Where to? Oh, that. That's right there, in the yard. She's relieved someone has come for it, finally. There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements, not a lot really. The harbor gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. She shifts in her seat awkwardly. Me? I am just a gardener. I am pleased to meet you too, officer. Of course, I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. The frequency tabler lights up and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. This is Officer Alice Demetri, precinct 57. How may I assist you? Just a second, officer. Ten two, ten five. This is forty first. Come in, over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status? Over. 
1018, state your message, sir. 10-9, over. 10-4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller, Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him, and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh god damn it! Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vicmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us! Ten four, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun, too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun, too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. Don't sweat it, Bratan! You don't need a gun to have fun! We can still have fun! It's not all over! Ten nine, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Even before you can get the words out, everything gets scrambled in your brain. He says he didn't lose his gun, or his phone, whatever that means. Ask him to describe it. His gun. Not his fun. Just the gun will do. <laughs> Satellite officer McLean requests a description of your weapon. Over. Oh, request a description, huh? We'll give him one. Describe the plasma gun. Then I'm come again, please. Over. Um, I'm going to need to put you on speaker for a second. Over. is describing his genitalia in exaggerated terms. Over. Host in heaven. 
Did he lose his gun and his mind? Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> this isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here made him piss his pants. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his ass. <laughs> he still got his wiener. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not going to. Ask him. Uh, Sergeant Orson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. That's a negative. Not going to say that. Over. What's he saying? Share with the class. He, uh, he said he sodomized your mother. The prick ate Mama's vanilla waffles at the captain's birthday party. Some nerve he's got. Sure her vanilla waffles were the only thing he ate? Shut up, Chester. This isn't funny. This is my mom we're talking about. Tell him to apologize right now. Sergeant Orson requests that you apologize for the claims that you made about his mother. Over. He says he's sorry and didn't mean nothing by it. Okay. Tell him. Tell him to find his goddamn badge and gun. That's the only thing that matters here. Satellite officer. Ten four affirmative. Officer is in pursuit of his firearm. Oh God, I. Uh... Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. Ten four, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but. What does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. All right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional funds. Uh, over. Anything else, sir? Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. Eighteen kilometers to the south, in the 41st Precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier, around a dozen cops. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? What happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He's lost his badge and his sidearm. He seemed confused, delirious even. Mac, the torso Torson, is finger-fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Yeah, Mullen was fucked all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Mac's right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on carriages? He's a lost man. 
I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. You wouldn't. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain, or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. I guess I can hold up the report for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway.